Jacobs Insurance Agency has served Shiawassee County and the surrounding areas since 1977. Just like Three Point Podcasts, we've had three generations, Gary Jacobs Sr., Gary Jacobs II, Brian Jacobs, and myself, Noah Jacobs, serving our community with offices in Waterford and Owasso on M21, just west of Home Depot. Stop in or go online to jacobsinsurance.com to get a quote or get your questions answered by our team. Jacobs Insurance is a proud supporter of our local schools and the proud sponsor of the Prep Spotlight. Insure everything, local, independent, and trusted. It's our family working together to protect yours. That's the Jacobs way. All right, guys, we'll start this part out with, I meant to mention it last week. This is the Prep Spotlight presented by Jacobs Insurance, but uh, the Fatel family, we have a little scholarship that's part of the Corona Foundation, and uh, the Fatel family scholarship was given out to Brevin Belor, the uh, three-point artist and top 10 yep. student. Got himself 1500 bucks and well-deserved nice. and uh, use it on his way to college. So congratulations to Brevin. Nice. Also, uh, you know, we talk about it every week, and we're going to keep talking about it in track and field. The Corona boys ruled the Cavalier, cra- Cavalier Classic in record-setting style. As you know, I was over there for a portion of it and definitely was impressed by how good this track team is. The Cavs set two new school records as Wyatt Bowers, now the king of the 200, running the race in 21.96 seconds. Corona also set a new school record in the 4 by 100 relay. Wyatt, his bro Tarek, Isaac Jake, Jacobs, and Oda Wilkerson finished at 42.6 seconds. Tarek took the 100 and the long jump. Jade Nettington, you know, he's a running back in football and a linebacker, but he's a hell of a shot putter, too. He has a new uh, meet record, 50 foot 5 inches. Uh, Kevin, Kenny Evans won the mile, and the Bauer boys, along with Jacobs, teamed with Logan Herrick to win the four by two hundred. So, again, I mean, we we t- seem to talk about it every week, but they're they're well on their way to a potential back to back state championship in track. Man, it's just impressive. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard not to think that they wouldn't be the favorites to go back to back, and then you have to wonder what kind of individual um, right. state championships they're going to rack up. They're breaking every record possible. It seems like so. And they've got to be well, gearing up for that. It's been a while since I've been to a track meet. Uh, you know, when I ran track, it was cinder blocks or cinder track. So that's how <laughs> long ago that was. But they really have come a long way with their with their uh, timing. You know, it's it's all computer generated timing. Yeah. You know, where in our in our, my day it was all stopwatch stuff. You know, I, I mean this in the nicest way possible. Those track meets back in the sixties, seventies, eighties. Those must have been like just circuses <laughs> probably no real organization and man kudos to you for running in those meets uh yeah even at your all and what the 800 right the 800 man it was it was brutal you know you, 800 you know, is a tough one it is especially when you kick in the last 200 you know and yeah. <laughs> you just want to puke afterwards no yeah. doubt about it but it was my point i was going to make is it's been a while since i've been to a track meet you know, and it's it's first class. There's these tents popped up everywhere. The different yeah. schools has their own tents. But the thing that was uh, impressive to me, they they call it. I think it was called adaptive adaptive races, where the mentally and physically challenged students get to participate against their own. I mean, it was it was really cool to see. You know, I mean, yeah. it, it's nice that they can be included. For sure, yeah. That. Yeah, it's always cool to see stuff like that, that they don't have to make it like some completely different event or something. They're just a part of the, the same track meet as, as everyone else. Is. Yeah, they, they just put them in their own separate category, but they feel part of the team. And even even one girl, they had one wheelchair girl. She she did the hundred all by herself. And, the, nice, and nice. you wouldn't you wouldn't believe the ovation she got. It oh, was yeah, it was sure. very impressive. That's cool. So kudos, man. The Cavs ran a good track meet there. Uh, also speaking of track, Ovid Elsie won the Marauders Lions Club invite, winning seven events, dominating the field events. Cohen Brown won the shot put. Brock Spitzley took the disc- discus. Uh, they also won the high jump. Chasen Thornton won the pole vault. Travis Milner the long jump. And at Dryden, Logan Smith set a new Oriole record for Morris record in the 110 meters and Perry's Jake Adams and Chandler Webb won the high jump and pole vault in that event. Uh, in baseball, Langsburg swept bass six, two and three, one as star Ty Randall. He made his return to the mound. We talked about him before as he is coming off Tommy John surgery, but uh, he played some infield before this week and he actually got back on the mound, retired the six batters he faced striking out three. So it's good to see he's on the road to recovery. Uh, speaking of Langsburg, 
man, what a softball squad they got this year. We've talked about this too. Now they're 19 and one. They swept Rudyard, 16 nothing, 12 nothing. Chesanine swept Merrill. New Lothrop won two doubleheaders this last week over Mount Morris and Waverly. This is uh, back to you, Jared. Golf. Owasso took home the Phillips Cup over Corona at the Owasso Country Club. And we've talked about the Owasso Country Club before. That's that's just a nice old style uh, golf course. But Owasso beat Corona 246-251. Ryan Dahl and Owen Feldposh led the way shooting par 71 in the two-man best ball. Uh, Dahl, Feldposh, and John Mazza each shot 38 in their tri-meet win over Linden and Clio earlier in the week. So the Trojans, boys golf team, they're shooting some pretty solid scores. Three guys, 38. I never lost to Owasso in anything but golf. God, they spanked us in golf every year, man. <laughs> they had, uh, I mean, Jalen Weekly is, I think, a thousand-point scorer in basketball. Dude, he can freaking golf. <laughs> so yeah. we were always matched up against him, and he used to spank us, man, religiously. <laughs> So congratulations to the Trojans there. And back to Langsburg for a moment. Langsburg shut out Dansville 5 to nil. The Pack have outscored CMAC competition now 42 to nothing on the season. So they're having a pretty good, uh, pretty Crazy. good spring sports season over there, aren't they? Anything on got... Perry that I might have missed, Matt? You got anything on the Perry baseball team? Yeah, I was gonna say Langsburg's just got a all around pretty great, pretty solid sports program. You know, every they do. boys, girls, sports all around. Um, I know Perry, they they split. You brought up Dansville. I know a couple of days ago they split a doubleheader with Dansville. Right. One of my buddies lives now in the Dansville area. His kids go to Dansville, and he said that Dansville has a starter, starting pitcher committed to West Virginia, throws in the upper 90s, apparently. Oh, wow. So impressive for Perry to split the doubleheader, um, you know, with a pretty good Dansville. Squad. I had to guess they probably lost the one that he pitched and probably I think. won the one that he didn't pitch. <laughs> yep. <I guess> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just remember there was a kid for uh, when I played in high school, there was a kid from Mount Pleasant. Um, I think he ended up going to play at Syracuse, but he, he threw in the mid upper nineties and, you know, most high schoolers just back in my day anyway, you know, 20 years ago, if you touched the eighties and got into the eighties that you were, you were a good high school pitcher. You know, most mm -hmm. people are in the 70, upper seventies, maybe right. low eighties. You go in there against someone who's throwing mid nineties. It was like, Oh, let me take a couple pitches first and kind yeah, of petrified. time this thing up a little bit. What What's the fastest either one of you guys have been on the radar gun at different events. Have you ever had yourself uh, I, measured? I remember when I was a kid, like you, like I was probably, fifth grade and i like went to like a tigers game and right. you think you're throwing like 70 like you never have really been at a radar gun and i remember <laughs> with my buddies like we like they have the radar gun at the tigers game like in the concourse yeah right. i like unloaded one as fast as i could it was like i think it was like 35 miles an hour <laughs> i think it's the only time i ever had it like rated i remember you know, like ruined the whole game it's like dude, it was like a jarring realization at how slow i threw <laughs> That's pretty funny. You you must have missed the dial or something. Like I, I have to think that you could throw faster than thirty five. I would think so. Dude, um, I don't know. I maybe the thing was off by a few miles per hour. But regardless, essentially what you're saying is even if it was like maybe forty five is how fast that ball went. Right. Yeah, that's true. Laughable. And then yeah, you're also not, comparing yourself to like Little League World Series. These guys are throwing seventy in the Little League World Series. It's like, yeah, I I, yeah. I think even when I was in my prime, I think I did it one time and maybe it was sixty or sixty five. Yeah. Thought I was throwing it just bullets you know yeah yeah it always feels a lot faster there there was they had a set up at there was always one of them set up in in bristol up on espn's campus right and they, they'd use it for different tv segments or you know whatever so we'd go over there and throw i could get into the low 70s and this was you know i was up there 15 years after high school so i mean i right. played like i was playing slow pitch softball but i wasn't throwing very consistently like right. in baseball, but I would get into 73, 74, and then I would not be able to throw for two weeks afterwards because you just you're blowing your shoulder out. But right. I always I, I you know maybe maybe like Jared's self-confidence there before he threw 35. I always felt like I could throw pretty fast. I, I was never really like a uh a junk pitcher. It was just all all fastballs. Where'd you play? What position did you play in baseball? I played shortstop in center field. Okay. Yeah, so I, I stopped pitching about freshman sophomore year of high school and just stuck to the field. But and we all know about Jared's uh, excursion in baseball. <laughs> right, get the merrig around I will, going. Yep, yeah. I will say there's <laughs> nothing like the rush of pitching in baseball. Yep. that's the number one like maybe even more than quarterback. Like you, you control the game. It's 100 percent on you. That's what I always loved about it. 
and yeah. also hated about it when you give up a when yeah. you yeah. lose the game for your team. But that's what was magical about that sport. And that when position. you lose the game in your little league and you're bawling your eyes out because you just lost the game for your team. That's right. You can't live that down, man. <laughs> all right, boys. Good segment. This this has been the Prep Spotlight. For all your insurance needs, definitely check out the folks at Jacobs Insurance Agency. They'll definitely hook you up with a good deal. All right. We'll be right back. We'll talk uh, about a variety of different sports topics right after this. <laughs> 